Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime Scene Cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. We are doing a, a massive uh, level five hoard. Here in bottles. Uh. Everything is new, but it's damaged by the rats. There's a whole reptile room. Looks like they were mostly snakes. So sometimes during these cleanouts, we find things that are disturbing. Is it gun, is it gun safe in there? Oh. These boxes are all empty. It doesn't look like it's a real gun. Is that one loaded? Is that loaded? Oh. Yeah, hi guys. Um, so Ed and Carissa, uh, owners of uh, Spalding Decon. We actually have Fort Myers in Naples, uh, also coined as uh, Spalding Decon Southwest Florida um, here. We're in uh, North Fort Myers today. Um, we are doing a, a massive uh, level five hoard. So the story is that um, it was uh, the sister of the owner of the home and, and uh, the owners uh, and, and so the brother-in-law and, and unfortunately the uh, the sister had went into the hospital and there was I believe was in the um, intensive care even a uh, really serious uh, condition the sister came over and you know kind of got involved looking after the cat and you know and so forth and they, they had some uh, reptiles in here as well I guess it was a shock to her she had no idea that that her sister and, and brother-in-law lived this way. And so she kind of told us the story that 10 years ago, they would always come to events. And then a few years later, he kind of stopped showing up and, but the sister would still come. And then a few years ago, she stopped coming and, you know, kind of, so it seems like there's a, a, a story that goes with that, how people kind of, uh, you know, just recluse from their, their friends and family and things of that nature. When called called me, I, I took the phone in the van and I can immediately hear the stress in her voice. So, you know, I try to remain calm and, you know, guide her through what the steps are. You know, she's just devastated that her sister is living this way. And, you know, she wanted to reach out and, and be able to help. And uh, she really wasn't up for, for going in. So she hung out by the door a little bit. We walked, walked through the house and came back out and said, you know, we can, we can definitely help you. And um, she says, well, my sister is in intensive care. And when she gets out, you know, I, I want to be able to present her, you know, with your findings and what you can do for her. Like, he's drying out. Oh, that's his tail. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was on a stick or something. No, he's drying out. So this is the initial first walking in, trying to clear out some space so we can get out the door. Um, there's some large bulky items we're trying to uh, get into the trash bin right now to kind of weigh things down a little bit. They've been, they've been lifesavers. They're hard workers. <laughs> we do this for fun. <laughs> right, they're here for fun. You know, a lot of times hoarders fall in their homes and that's how things like this get discovered. Um, because family has to be called or 911 comes. I mean, and, how do you get somebody out of here? Well, look at the door. The door is totally... Um, destroy the frame because they had to break it down to get in here. Oh my god, imagine a fire yeah. going with this. Yeah. yeah. Nice and quiet. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe a little silverfish or something. Yeah. Oh, it's a calendar. 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 Unfortunately, everything's infested or ruined or might even be inside there. There's more rat droppings than there are cat droppings in the kitty litter. <laughs> well, I think the important thing is, is like what people need to know is that, you know, when you call us, you're either going to get me or Ed. 
you know we're going to be the ones you're going to talk to we're going to be the ones that are going to hold your hand and, and walk you through the, the situation and and find you help if you need help she wanted to present her sister some options but in her mind there was just no way she was going to let her sister go back in live in this condition once she knew about it so because you know she wasn't sure that maybe at this stage in, in you know in in their lives that it would be nice to uh, get a lump sum of money and just walk away from it just you know be able to have a fresh start we would work closely with them to find all the items that they absolutely um, felt were important or that they needed we would find them locate them pack them and move them on a truck to uh, you know a reasonable distance location uh, so that they could just start fresh and, and walk away. They thought about it, apparently uh, more more than we realized uh, and considered that, but um, you know, for them, uh, this is their home and they, they wanna move back in their home for the time mm -hmm. that they have left. You know, I think both of them have some, some health issues. So um, so our job now is to, uh, to make that real in a realization for them. Movies, movies, movies. Here, here, where are we putting the crazy movies? Cool. The bad thing about this is, is, is the rats carry disease and stuff. I mean, you would think that there had reptiles, there'd be snakes in here, but I haven't seen one yet. I don't like one. The rats are, I joke, like house cats. Count of seven in a box, yeah. 12. 12 rats think, in yeah, here? Yeah, with hers, it would make number 12, yeah. But there were seven of them and then two big, they like house cats. I thought it was a cat when it ran by. There you go. Oh, those are little guys compared to... Uh, Look at him go. Oh, wow. Acrobatic. Spider rat. Come on, you want to go outside? Go. There you go. Go, oh, oh. go, go. go. Oh. Back in the wall. What's that being added? Oh, there's a vacuum under here. Found a body. What's that? I haven't seen him since 1973. What is it? It's a skeleton in a bag. Oh. You know, and so one of the things that as we were meeting with, with the uh, owner, there's uh, three full pallets uh, of, uh, you know, very expensive red mulch um, that's that's been out here for probably over a year. We talked about it. We decided we're going to, um, you know, donate some 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 man hours uh, and some time to, to the landscaping just so that if nothing else, when they drive up the street and they look at their home, you know, not only is it clean on the inside, but you know, it has a, it has a freshened, uh, you know, curb appeal look on the outside and a hundred times better <laughs> than what it was. So, yeah. and yeah. I don't think it, uh, you know, a tree or a bush has been trimmed in, you know, eight years. So you can only imagine, uh, you know, we go home and at least we feel good that, that, you know, we are helping people. We're helping our community that we live in. Found a big nest in the garage with babies and uh probably about six adults we saw i saw two in here so far so sometimes during these clean outs we find things that are disturbing we get it it's the cycle of life we just have to uh take care of that and uh those will be buried we won't throw those in the trash we know from some of the hoarding scenarios people don't have the resources i mean this is this is very expensive you know this particular one's you know on the uh, 20 plus and that doesn't even include any type of uh, put back, uh, repair, you know, uh, deep clean, anything like that. This is just a, a massive level five. And uh, we're trying to connect with some nonprofits, some victims advocate groups that we've uh, uh, run into as we're following our, our biomedical uh, and biohazard with the, with the cities uh, and the counties. This is our single largest one so far. Um, but uh, coincidentally, uh, just this past Sunday, we, we went up north a little further and uh, uh, looked at a horde that's uh, probably a level five as well. Maybe you can kind of talk about how you deal right. with that. Right, yeah, I, I just reassured her, you know, I could just see when she looked at me, just that, that look in her eyes was like, I'm, I'm so ashamed. But I'm like, we're not here to judge, we're here to help you. And we, want, we want to help you. We understand that it's an illness. And I said, you know, out of all of the people that we've helped, I said, you know, you've taken that extra step and you're going to therapy and, and you recognize that you, you have an issue. And, you know, she'd been out of her home for a couple of weeks. And the first thing she said when we walked through the door was, oh my, I didn't remember it being this bad because the way she described it to me on the phone. <laughs> it was like was, this. Was, <laughs> yeah. And we walk in, it was like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you see this guy, uh, he's still kind of in intact somewhat. Kind of sad thing here is um, 
there's there's a whole reptile room looks like they were mostly snakes i just want to say i think through you know some of the challenges they've had over the years i believe they they may have all died in their in their cages but we are trying to work with the uh, local humane society and some other folks that deal with uh, uh, reptile rescue aquariums and such in there that uh, um, you know that i think will make a a nice thing for a shelter of some sort. So. so this is an interesting little find. So we have what we are calling the reptile room back here, and um, apparently he would collect the uh, the venom from the oh, wow. uh, snakes. So these are like little uh, vial. These will go along with the donation as well. Electric cart crew. Just trying to read the boxes. What's inside? This particular case, we're finding everything is new in the boxes, but it's been so damaged by the rats with the urine and chewing on the boxes and um, they're creating little nests and having babies inside of the boxes so you got to be careful as you can see definitely a trash hoard uh, definitely seeing a lot of overspending uh, buying more than one thing uh, we kind of you know thought it was pretty funny that you know we're finding lots and lots of boxes of trash bags <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> throughout the living room. New in the box. <laughs> New in the box, trash bag. Yeah. yeah. We saw the cat dealing live with uh, one of the monster rats, and I can tell you that cat wanted nothing to do with that rat. I think they've come to an agreement that that rat could kick his ass if he had to, so. <laughs> that cat was not going to mess with it. He was by far outnumbered, right? Yeah. So it's a little after five and we've just wrapped up day one. Uh, we're setting up some uh, rat traps right now. I'm just gonna try to catch uh, a few of the, the big ones that are running around still. The homeowner just came through for a quick walk through. Uh, very happy uh, with uh, what she was seeing. All right, so I'm Greg Bodwin. Um, I've got like, I don't know, 32 years in construction. I've been doing it since I was 18. We heard about this job on Craigslist. Yep. Watched the show a bunch of times and never really could imagine what it was like until you step into one of these houses. It's, <laughs> I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I'm Jill. Actually, I'm a lunch lady. I worked for the school district 17 years. Um, I took some time off because we're, we're rebuilding a home. Whole house, so I took a lot of vacation time. Had over 600 hours, so uh, we got a little bored with doing the house. So we thought we would come out and I had help a breakdown. These guys. It's unique. It, the rats, the the rodents, the the garbage, the the smell. So I guess if you get immune to the smell and you don't mind rats sleep, sleeping next to you, I mean. It's just the fact that when you touch something, I, I can't wash my hands enough. I go home over the weekend, here, you're eating dinner at the restaurant, I swear I can smell it. Yeah, we're here to help. Make a difference. Make a difference. Maybe change somebody's um, way of thinking, you know, by going and seeing their house clean again. So here we are, day two, over here on the right. We've started to bring out uh, some of the homeowners' uh, personal items. Uh, things that still need to be uh, decontaminated. We've got the landscaper here. He's back for day two for himself, trimming around the, the trees so we can get to the windows. So today what we're hoping to uh, accomplish is we are on um, our second 30 yard dumpster. Uh, we got another one coming at noon as we're working hard for, you know, restoring this home, you know, every single day. Uh, there's a new challenge that comes up, so we keep moving forward. Ooh, did something get you? There's, there's a couple running around. Oh, gosh. Coming my way. Oh, he was? <laughs> it's actually worse inside the house than it is up here. Oh, okay. Some traps tripped, but uh, we didn't catch them. And sometimes difficult to catch. Believe it or not, rats are, uh, rats are pretty smart little characters. As you can see, this is the uh, attic space. I'd say the rodent dropping is probably only 20% of the volume is what it is inside the house. Uh, I was up here a few minutes ago, saw a couple running around looking at me uh, up here. So we're gonna try to set some traps, see if we can't uh, catch a couple while we're downstairs working. There's another one just moving. The request here was only trash on the floor, but you know, obviously these nightstands and so forth, I mean, it's just uh, absolutely full of uh, trash, rat droppings. Obviously we're gonna continue to work with this client so that we can have them understand, uh, you know, that trash on the floor is, this, this is a much more serious scenario and we can't, we can't really just uh, work within that parameter. That's just not reasonable. So urine and bottles, just everywhere. Oh, 
Oh my god. Look at this crate right here. Oh, see the bottle of the piss? Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> it looks behind your neck first. Is that better? Oh. Yeah. Is it gun? Is it gun safe in there? Oh. These boxes are all empty. Yeah, this is like a military grade yeah, ammo it's box. Empty too. Is that a bomb. Empty. Is that not for guns? Maybe. I found tons of marbles and stuff. Ah! Oh boy. Oh, there it is. Ah! Right it's up. Baby, it's up. Here they come. Oh, ah! Ah! Mama's pissed. They're under there. Here she comes! What? It doesn't look like it's a real gun. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I've got a couple. Oh. There's no point in it. No, it's a BB gun. Oh, BB gun. It's not, it's not loaded. Alright. Thank you. Well, I don't know if that's what she was looking for or not. She said rifle. BB gun, rifle. I don't know. Is that one loaded? Is that loaded? Nope. Oh. So what kind of uh, leads us to believe that maybe these were rifles is... Um, you know, one of them has a concealed weapons permit. He's taken the course, and I know she was looking for this, so I just sent her a picture and says, you know, is this what you've been looking for? So she's awfully concerned about it, but I guess if it's a permit, it's probably pretty important that you, you know, if you're carrying a gun, that you know where this is. But I hate when I look in my shoe and I see rat shit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's why you Tape, tape around the top of your shoe. We're able to donate our uh, reptile tanks to a reptile rescue locally, which is always fantastic. So they're going to be on their way to come pick it up. It's clean now. Well, I didn't know that it was. Look, look, look we got a pool cue? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Anything in there? Oh, I got a box. Right here. How many of those are fine? Does it smell great? There is a question. Oh, not too bad. You just throw it over laminate. Yeah. Box like, like, a, like a spring rat uh, trap, and it jumped on me. And I was like, ah, knocking it off. <laughs> well, every time I heard somebody scream, I'm like, ah, another rat found. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, like, we're, we're here doing it, you don't smell it on you, but you go somewhere and like you smell like a bump, something like somebody pissed on you. I got in Ashley's car, and she's like, oh my god, get out. Yeah. I'm like, it's bad. My front yard is putrid. It's Friday it afternoon, Friday. we made it. Yeah. And the day yeah. two. For our luck of getting um, some some good workers, man, we found we found three of the That's three of the best in Fort Myers. It's hard to stop. <laughs> you know, it's even one of those things. I do a um, a saline nasal flush yeah, just to flush. just to get yeah, anything out of I your dam because mm -hmm. it uh, it you know gets in your your yeah. nasal passages right. and stuff. Well, that respirator now that's that's a godsend. Yeah. Yeah. Till you lose one of the filters off of it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where'd it go? Where'd it go? <laughs> I, I found it, yeah. <laughs> he did. He, he's in there. Yeah. That's why I come bailing out of there. I was like, where's the, <laughs> where's the filter? <laughs> then a rat jumped on me. I was like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. First thing we're going to do Monday is uh, hopefully go pick up about uh, six or eight rats um, in the traps that we set. <laughs> little sons of guns. Uh, and they ate the cheese out of our traps. and. Uh, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't catch them last night, so we'll, yeah. better luck this time. So. <laughs> That's what we're yeah. going to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, 2016. Oh my gosh. There's the one of the rifles. Catching it at the box. Four of them. Five of them. Oh, God. Oh, God. There goes the boot. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.